Hi girls of standard 5th welcome back to our EVS 1 science second term portion which is presented by Ms Shilpa Ribello we are going to study a new lesson for the second term in this presentation this lesson is also divided into two parts as we have divided the first lesson so our lesson name is infectious diseases and how to prevent them it's lesson number 23 so we will study the half lesson in this presentation as part 1 so let's begin with our lesson so girls when your friends fall while playing and get hurt does anyone tell you don't go near them you will also get hurt now you are playing you all friends come together and play in school nearby your houses in your surroundings and by chance if anyone falls down and they get hurt so if any and does anyone tell you or don't go near them you will also get same hurt no no one tells like that because our parents advise us to help in such situations if they have got hurt we are supposed to help them by applying first aid so our parents advise us to do the good things second suppose your mother has a headache headache means if your mother's head is paining do you also get a headache if you go near your mother no we will not get headache as this is not a contagious disease now what do you mean by contagious disease what is contagious that any type of disease that you get by touching somebody or something now by chance if someone has got the disease and if he has taken a glass so if that same glass is being taken by you then you can also get that disease so contagious disease means if any disease any person has got any type of disease and same and if you have touched that person or person's thing then naturally you will get the same disease now when is it told when is it that you are told not to go near a sick person not to use their utensils for eating or drinking not to use their hand keys towels or clothes when it is told yeah we are told to stay away from people who are ill especially those who are having flu swine flu that is known as influenza cold ringworms scabies chicken pox etc also measles mumps and high fever so if any of the person any of the people who are suffering from this illness then we are not supposed to go near them what is flu flu is a bad cold and with that our full body starts paining especially legs and hands pain a lot then cold you know it So what do you mean by ringworm the rashes comes on a body on skin infection of the skin also by the nails then scabies it's a red spots it's a skin disease and red spots come on a skin especially hands legs and that it's pain so much that we are we start scratching our legs hands that is khujli and chicken pox you know the small small boils come same is measles mumps especially on the cheeks and high fever so if anyone is suffering from this illness we are not supposed to go near them and that is what is known as infectious disease 
okay so what do you mean by it mothers buns or grandpa's backache are not passed on from them to others if grandpa is getting headache or back problem if mother buns then if we touch them nothing will happen to us not not uh, nothing will pass to us so however one has to take care to stay away from people who are ill especially with the flu cold ringworm scabies and chicken pox so this diseases whichever diseases we have seen just now the flu cold ringworm scabies chicken pox mumps all this diseases spread from one person to the other so such diseases are called infectious diseases they are called infectious diseases so all this flu ringworms scabies chicken pox all this are the diseases which spread from one person to another if we touch them so such diseases are called infectious diseases now what are the causes what causes infectious diseases if you see in the picture you can see that the boy is sneezing so how they are caused they are caused by microorganisms these are the microorganisms which are in air so every infectious disease is caused by a specific microorganism or germs so now what do you mean by microorganism micro means is very very small tiny an organism means a living thing so micro what do you mean by microorganism a very very small living thing very tiny we are not able to see them with our naked eyes with our own eyes so microorganisms are tiny living things which cannot be seen with our naked eyes with our own eyes but they can be seen only with the help of microscope can you see the microscope uh, picture here so with the help of this microscope only we can see the we can see microorganisms now when the germs of a particular disease enter the body and they begin to grow in our body then the person gets the disease it doesn't when the disease enter we never it quickly never gets what happens they start growing in our body and then we are affected with that disease so how is one person's disease passed on to another person how it is so if you see in the picture what you can see that the man is coughing so what happens the microorganisms the germs come out from his body and spread in the air so when a person has a cold the germs from his body spread in the air when he coughs or sneezes when he coughs and sneezes whatever the microorganisms the germs which are in his body come out through the help of the nose and the mouth and then it spreads in the air so when the germs same air is being taken by the other people also we also all over so the germs when the, it comes out they enter the other people's body and so that people also get the same disease so that is how the disease are spread even typhoid spreads when it germs are passed on by a person ill with typhoid to another person so typhoid also spreads same way if the person who is having the uh, typhoid we are not supposed to touch him or use anything otherwise we will also be 
getting the same disease that is typhoid now spread of infectious disease now what are the different ways in which infectious disease are spread what are the mediums so what are the different ways in which infectious disease are spread what are the mediums they spread by the help uh, by air water food and insects i repeat again they spread through air water food and insects the first topic we are going to see how the disease is spread through air the germs of a diseases like influenza swine flu tuberculosis that is tb etc are present in the air these germs are present in the air so even germs are present in the spit or sal saliva of the person who has the disease spit means we spit no on the roads in the open places yeah so if the person who is having the disease and they spit on the road then that germs whatever the germs comes out from their body also spreads in the air so when he coughs spits or sneezes what happens they enter the air with the tiny droplets of saliva or spit so when other people breathe that same air now when we spit what happens from same place many people walk move from one place to another so if when other people breathe that same air the germs enter their body and they also get same disease so diseases of the throat and the chest spread through the air the diseases of the throat and the chest spread through the air and that is why we are told to cover our nose and mouth when we cough or sneeze nowadays girls it's very important because covid 19 correct and because of that we are told to use mask to cover our nose and mouth correct for same reason we are not supposed to cough or sneeze if coughing and sneezing is takes place we are supposed to cover our nose either with handkerchief or most probably you can use mask now can you see the picture over here it's there in your textbook 122 page okay so what you can see in this picture yeah in this picture there are many activities going on we can see many activities what are they we can see two women are washing clothes ladies are washing clothes can you see they are put for drying also yes then a man is giving birth to the cattle a boy is jumping in a river might be for taking bath or swimming then one boy is discharging feces from the body now what do you mean by feces we go for toilet no so that boy is sitting near the bank of the river and doing toilet that is in the open space and the last one a man is filling water for drinking or might be some other use so these are the so many activities going on in this we can see in this picture so what happens what you have seen that the disease is also spread through water now what will happen if drink contaminated water if we drink contaminated water what do you mean by contaminated whichever is not good not clear okay so what will happen if we drink okay dirty water we can see in this picture 
so it contaminates uh, so many things there is dust some uh, particles you can see in that water yeah so if you drink this water what will happen naturally you will not drink it but by chance you are not knowing that it is a dirty water it is contaminated water so by chance if you have it so what will happen you will fall ill you will suffer from many diseases such as typhoid cholera diarrhea and joint disease so we are not supposed to drink contaminated water we are supposed to drink the clean water so the germs of diseases like typhoid cholera diarrhea as also of joint disease are present in the feces of the affected person when they when the person is having this type of disease and when they go in the open area for toilet then this germs whatever germs they have they come out to the help of the toilet and that germs spread in the air okay also if they go for toilet in the open spaces like river bank of river that is on the side of the river or sea shore okay near the lakes side of the lakes so what happens this feces get mixed with the water and along with that water the germs also enter in the water because the germs are present in that toilet so the germs also enter the water and what happens then if another person drinks that same water which is being contaminated which the germs are over there so what happens that water enters the person's intestines and that person can also get the same disease if the person is getting joint disease and if he is going for toilet on the sea shore what happens or if he goes the toilet to the lakes because lake water we can use it for drinking so if that water is mix up with that toilet so what will happen the germs will enter in the water and if same water is being taken for drinking the whatever the germs are entering that water will go in the other person's intestine who is taking that water drinking that water and that person also can get joint disease okay so we are supposed to clean drink clean water can you see in the picture yes so to prevent the spread of disease through water what we are supposed to do what we are supposed to avoid washing clothes and bathing in the water sources or defecating on the banks of the water etc that means we are not supposed to go for washing clothes in the river side or the lakes in the open area then we are not supposed to take bath either in the river either in the lakes either on the sea shore in the sea and also we are not supposed to go for toilets on in the river side that is open space river side lake side or on sea shore so that way can be the best if you will not go then only there will be no spread spread of diseases we all will be in the good health now to avoid water borne diseases we should drink only safe water that is filtered water or boiled water and very important wash your hands with soap or hand wash or dettol after using washroom when you go for washroom toilet so when you come back see that you are washing your hands with soap or hand wash or dettol is it clear to you all so that was about the spread of disease through water now we are going to see the next third spread of disease through food yes we can get disease even with spread of food how 
Now, can you see in this picture? What do you see? Yes, that a family, one of the family has gone in a restaurant to eat food. But the condition of that restaurant, that hotel is not good. If you see that hotel, it is unclean. And because of unclean, it is not hygienic. It is not good for our health. And so, if you see, the food also is kept open. It is not covered. And if you see, the rats are passing on it. On that food, the tables you see are unclean. It is not clean. Whatever the waste, leftover food is there. It is not clean. It is there on the table itself. We can see with our eyes. And even the waiter, whoever we see, uh, see, looks very ugly, and he is also unclean. He is also in the dirty position. So all the nearby environment also is unclean condition. So what happens if we eat in this condition? Yeah, you may have heard of a number of people getting gastro and diarrhea after eating contaminated food at a function, also in some other places. Diseases is spread through food also. So this is also called food poisoning. So if we eat this such type of food, what happens? We get acidity, we get gastro problem, then diarrhea, vomiting, loose motions. Okay. So and it is known as food poisoning. So why is it important to always keep our food cover? Why we should cover our food? Yes. You have seen flies sitting on the dirt. We see flies, mosquitoes sitting on the dirty things, on the garbage. On the, uh, when we go for uh, toilets, if the some of the people do the toilets on the open space, we can see there. So same flies. What happens when they sit on the feces of a person who has an inter intestinal disease? The germs of the disease stick to their legs. So the toilets also when they sit, this what happens? These flies, mosquitoes sit on the dirt, on the garbage. Then they sit on the toilet. That is feces. And what happens when this uh, flies or mosquitoes sit? That germs, whatever germs are there, they stick to their legs. And that same flies sit on our food. So what happens? Aram say that germs enter in our food. And if we eat that same food, naturally that germs will enter our body, and we can get that same disease. So for that reason, to avoid to get disease, what we are supposed to do? It is important. To always keep our food covered, we should always keep our food covered. Food is handled while preparing or serving it. If someone who has a has an intestinal disease handles or serves food without washing his hand properly, the germs sticking to his hand can enter the body now for functions when we go for functions someone serves you especially in the hotels also restaurants also the waiters serve you so if this waiters if any of the person who serves you are defect affected by some disease and if they are not washing their hands at the right time so what happens the germs stick to their hands and when they serve with the same hands the germs enter that food and that same food if we have then naturally that food the germs enter in our body so food contaminated in this way can also cause disease the same food if we eat naturally we will also suffer with that same disease we will also get same disease 
so one must avoid eating it if anyone serves same way without washing the hands or what you are supposed to tell them also if we maintain cleanliness everywhere around us or wherever whichever place we go or whichever place they it is if we maintain cleanliness then naturally it is beneficial for our health it is really very good for our health we will not get any of the disease and our health will be really very safe now what steps will you take to ensure that dust and flies do not settle on the food in your house what you will do yes we will cover the food properly once the cooking is over what your mother will do she will cover the food why so that flies or dust will not settle on the food they will not sit on that food and we will keep our surrounding clean and also it will be dirt free there will be no dirt assembled in near the surrounding so that flies will not come in our house outside if there is no dirt then why the flies will enter in our house so in this way we will keep our family and ourselves away from disease so keeping food covered ensures that flies cannot sit on it if the food is covered naturally the fire flies and mosquitoes will not come or any other insects will not come and sit because the food is already covered with something correct so the flies will not sit on it even dust and other rubbish in the surroundings also cannot enter it they will not sit if there is no dust and rubbish outside so this prevents the microorganisms from entering the food and the spread of disease is also prevented if the food is naturally covered what will ha- happen this microorganisms or germs will not enter with the help of the flies and mosquitoes so naturally the spread of disease will also be prevented it will not happen that the spread of disease will stop so disease is spread through contaminated food is also called food poisoning if you see the picture or it is a feast on an open ground means a larger meal big meal is all are coming together from the village and having a meal here so now here is also if the food is in the open it is not covered the naturally the disease can be spread so what happens it is called as food poisoning now the last part the spread of disease by insects we have seen air food water now it is insects this is the fourth insects now we have seen insects we have heard about insects especially mosquitoes no so we may you may be aware that one can get malaria and dengue have you heard about these names yes malaria and dengue from the bite of a certain kind of mosquitoes so when the mosquitoes there are different types of mosquitoes there are malaria mosquitoes dengue mosquitoes and if this mosquitoes bite us then naturally we get malaria or dengue so when this type of mosquito bites someone who has malaria the malaria germs in that person's blood enter the mosquito's body where with the blood it sucks can you see in the picture see here is here is the red color so that is the blood the mosquito has suck of a person so what happens that when this type of mosquito bites someone who has malaria some of the person who is having malaria and if this mosquito is biting him 
so naturally here mosquito has sucked his blood if you see his stomach so this the malaria jumps in that person's blood enter the mosquito's body correct naturally so what happens with the blood it sucks so what happens if that same mosquito goes and bite the another person then that malaria jumps whichever the blood is in his group in his stomach what happens enter that person's body with the help of that same the germs enters the other person's body and he can also get malaria so even here mosquitoes are very harmful insects like mosquitoes and fleas that is house flies spread disease house flies also spread disease mosquitoes also spread disease so that is why we must stop such insects from breeding breeding means from moving one place to another they are not supposed to enter in a house and move from one place to another so what we are supposed to do we can use good night coil a mortar to stop it so here are the two types of mosquitoes that is anopheles if anopheles mosquito bites you you will get malaria and if it is mosquito bites you you will get dengue is it clear to you all so girls i stop over here i hope so you have understood with this first part we will continue the next remaining part in the next presentation here is a small assignment given to you all where you are supposed to do it complete it in your science notebook take the help of this presentation or your textbook and complete it along with the question and answers i hope so you are clear and you understood the half of the lesson bye girls thank you stay home stay safe